Hello and welcome to another Tea Break CPD session with myself, Chris Seeger and Malmore Downey. This time we're looking at the access to scripts uh, with the fabulous script viewer from Pearson. On the screen there at the moment, just an example of what comes back when you request the scripts via script viewer. But I think first of all, let's uh, look at how you get those scripts. So um, the important thing about this is you have to have an Edexcel online account, which your exams officer can set you up with. And once you're on there, just check that on the left hand side on the drop down or the navigation bar that you can see script viewer and then you'll be able to know that you've got access to it. So it is controlled to access the scripts. We should say that you do need the permission from the students. And I think we'll cover that in more detail as well. Yeah, the edXL online is that portal that has lots of links via and like Mal said, even if it's just a matter of getting your login details, see your exam officer or whoever controls that within your centre. I know at my school, it's the head teacher that actually controls and looks after the login details for the portals from the exam boards. But once you're in and you've got that bit sorted, check you've got the script viewer on the drop down part or, or the navigation on the left hand side. In terms of finding edXL online, just Google edXL online or even script viewer, and it'll bring up the right connections in terms of what web page to go through to get there. Yeah, it's quite interesting that it took me, I think, 18 months till I realised that all of these stuff, that exam board resources were available to me as a normal teacher and not just the head of department. So it is available to teachers and the resources like Script Viewer, Results Plus, Exam Wizards, the Emporium, all similar kind of protocols to get onto them. Once you're in, select the session first and the, the GCSEs. Uh... The, the bottom one there and this is from 2022 so last summer's uh, results that I was following through with the presentation here and then type in the student's surname there are other ways of getting in there so via the subject or the candidate number found it easier per surname to get through in the individual scripts but what you will get when you put in the student surname is all of their examinations for edXL or Pearson so if they do music with a Pearson examination, they will be on there as well. So you just have to obviously search for the mathematics papers within their chunk of papers for that surname. So you're looking specifically for 1MA1, 1F, 1MA1, 2F or higher papers. Or if you're looking for the A level as well, that's on there. View on the right hand side, you can see and then off you go and you will have there a, a PDF um, that you can download, keep. Um, and obviously, again, we, we go over this shortly, but you do need the permission from the students, the signed documents, which you cannot get signed until the students have picked up their GCSE results. As they come in on that August results day, after that day, you can ask for the student's permission um, via the documents. And then this is what you get to see. So the front cover all the way through, but with the annotated stamp of how many marks that question was awarded. And you can see that with the uh, the big blue arrow on the right hand side there. Yeah, I found it invaluable in terms of remarks and reviews, but also some of the questions that you think they're going to nail because you think, oh, the whole class has got that. And then you look and there's still those common misconceptions being brought up time and time and time again. Yeah. What we've learned over the years since this has been available is how important it is for the team, not just us individually and not just for remarks or reviews, but as a team developing that understanding of the mark scheme. But and again, what Mal just said, those misconceptions, those underlying issues that crop up year after year going and looking for them, finding them and talking about them as a team. And this was a brilliant example. I am rewinding here to, I think, the 2018 papers. A lad who answered this question beautifully, brilliantly, but with a completely different route than the mark scheme. And it's just a little reminder here that the mark scheme is not exhaustive. There are other methods to get there. So it was just a, a big eye opener for us to one, understand what's in the mark scheme, but then also understand the route that some of these students have taken to get to some of those questions and discussing it as a team. Why have they gone for this route? Why have they done this? This was a, a very individual case here that we came across in terms of doing some reverse percentages to answer this question. But nonetheless, a brilliant conversation within the team 
and going back over the script enabled us to find these scenarios and have those discussions. Yeah, and I also think it, it's important, and this really proves why we have a P mark on this question. And this, I think, was part of the reason why a P mark was introduced is because the process mark is for teachers and markers to get their head around the fact that there could be other methods and that it's not just this predetermined method that has been allocated to a question. So just beware, it's not just this method that we're, we're laying out in the mark scheme. There are other ways through the question. And if Pearson then tried to include every method for every question, the mark schemes would be hundreds of pages long. So I thought, and as a question, this particular one, we went, sent it for review and then ended up going for appeal. Yeah, because on the, the, the front cover of it, you, you can see there doesn't match the mark scheme and very, very different approach. We did go through the route of um, an appeal to try and get this this lad an extra grade because he was so close to the, the borderline of, um, I think it was an eight into a nine now, and it did come back and we, we won the appeal on the back of really looking at a completely different method that was was in the mark scheme but again none, nonetheless we we have to remember that a mark scheme cannot like mal said have every single method in but it was it was a brilliant training session for us as a team and also looking at it on the individual case of this student in terms of his grade for the future so yeah interesting it was a it was a great process to go through as a department this is a very quick uh, overview the results plus package that Mal mentioned a second ago again, which is accessible via that link and uh, with, a, with a tick at the, in the background system that the exam officer has access to, looking at the script capability along with where you really excelled as a department, as a school, or really underperformed as a school as well, and having brilliant training sessions within your team looking at the, the, the scripts but also looking at the stats and the data that's behind it is amazing um, and that's a session for another day in terms of talking about results plus and possibly linking in with the scripts viewer system here this one's just about looking at scripts viewer but nonetheless it's a, a, a fabulous uh, match up with those two yeah and i think in terms of that question the the bottom left one sega the lowest common multiple being one of the worst five i think that was a, a learning sort of exercise for me and you at the time was that was on the higher tier yet was that question on the foundation they didn't underperform on the foundation tier students did they and it would be that those some higher tier students it would have been a long time since they'd had a pro or gone through those kind of questions and it just showed to us the importance of revisiting those what we think is prior knowledge and stuff that we automatically assume students are going to be able to do. And just then going back and saying, so what is the difference between those higher and foundation students? And I've done a similar thing this year where we looked at, I think it was what we would class sort of key stage three-ish kind of topic that our students underperformed. It was only three, quest three questions on the paper where we got lower than the edXL average. And it was quite interesting. It was just, it was that long since our students had seen whatever the topic was. It could have been pictograms that it just made me think. And it was it was a topic that would have taken up a lot of space on my starters that really made me think I've got to at least throw in those kind of questions. At least, well, and I have. I've So I've revisited my starters and made sure they're in there. So we're all still learning from this kind of thing. There we go, a very quick CPD tea break looking at access to scripts. Any questions, get in touch. Cheers. Bye.